Good morning. My name is Ralph Freaks. I'm an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, an author, and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back radio show, combined with the YouTube version on YouTube under Take Your Life Back Today show. I want to talk about how drama drains you. Learn how to deal with your uh, the drama makers in your life, the people that put all that drama in your life. Me personally, I hate drama. I really hate it. I realize that's a pretty strong statement, but it's true. I don't play games. I ne never have done. I never will do. I don't understand the sick pleasure someone gets from pulling some sort of power play on another human being. And I really don't understand the need to make someone else feel worse in order for you to feel better. None of it's fun uh, uh, to me. Uh, is it fun to me? Um, and it never will be. I find it pointless and exhausting. However, in this day and age of desperate housewives of God knows what drama is seen to be the norm. Even more frustratingly, the drama is rarely about life or death situations or issues. They're never brokering world peace, for instance. It's usually about stupid, irrelevant things. I guess I'd like drama more if it felt like it meant something. Maybe turned out to some positive meaning, but it just doesn't. While some of us hate pointless drama, for some people creating it or engaging it is energizing. It seemingly charges their life force for another day. It keeps them going. For others that are uh, empaths or highly sensitive people or HSP like me, drama is completely draining because we pick up on others' emotional state as well as the effects that certain actions can have on others, such as causing pain or sadness. Drama is incredibly painful. Worse, the more you are around a drama maker, the more that your energy is turned into their fear, sadness, and anger. My friends, it is uh, any wonder that drama is depleting in you or depleting your energy. So what's a non-game playing drama hater to do? Here are my tips for surviving a drama-laden world. Number one is to avoid the drama makers, the people that cause the drama in your life. Some people love drama. Some people feel life is boring and they need to spice it up. So they stir things up to amuse themselves. Other people feel no power in life and therefore need to extend power in silly over-dramatized ways. Whatever their reasons, uh, drama people need to create drama as much as we all need to breathe. Obviously, the best course of action is to avoid these people totally. However, that's easier said than done, especially when you are dealing with a, a friend, a co-worker, a boss, or a family member. Your approach needs to be specific to the relationship. If you're dealing with a friend who keeps causing drama, try to uh, uh, re-evaluate that friendship. If they are talking about others and causing bad feelings between people to you and then they are doing it behind your back, uh, also avoid that. This uh, is that particular person you really want in your life. If you are dealing with a co-worker or a boss, it's definitely more complex. Find ways to decrease your interactions, if at all possible. If it gets too much, if you come home from work exhausted and sick day after day, you do uh, need to look for other work. Your health and well-being depend on it. If it's a family member again, your best course of action is to decrease your time in interactions with this person. I know it's hard, but it's essential to your well-being to do so. My friends, we've been repeatedly taught that family is everything, which leads many people to put up with horrible behavior which the world would never allow in any other relationship or aspect of their lives. Just because someone is related to you doesn't give them the right to be a negative or abusive force in your life. You do have the right to set healthy boundaries and decrease uh, time with someone who constantly wears you out. My friends, regardless of their relationship to you, you need to stand up. And let, let's and let drive this point home. Whatever your relationship is, if you know someone in your life who is constantly playing games with others, 
talking negatively about others behind their backs and demeaning others, best believe it's being directed at you. I guarantee you. Don't just hope that they aren't uh, going to start with you, or especially in the case of a boss, that if you just keep your head down, he or she won't turn on you. Learn from what you are seeing. If they do it to others, they are doing it to you. Whether you are aware of it or not, it's just a matter of uh, time until you are the primary focus of their negative attention. Get away from there as quickly as possible. Get away from that situation as quickly as possible. The next tip is drama is inherently childish, but that's uh, the point. Treat a drama person as you would treat a child having a temper tantrum. If you ever dealt with um, someone in the midst of causing drama, then you've seen his or her three-year-old self acting out. In my experience for all these years as a life coach, those that cause drama for amusement or attention have had some sort of stunting to their growth at a young age. They have a broken sense of self-worth. Perhaps their parents didn't pay attention to them, so they, uh, they'd scream to get some uh, attention from the outside, to be noticed. Maybe they were in a situation where they weren't taught to use their words to express their emotional prop, uh, emotions properly. They now only know how to use them to hurt others, including you, possibly. Maybe they are simply modeling what they saw the adults in their life do. Remember, the parents are role models at home. Whatever it is, causing drama and playing power games is inherently childish and attention-seeking. It's a kid's way of exerting power over their surroundings rather than an adult uh, way of changing the outcome of experience through positive actions. The being, uh, 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 that being the case, if you treat the drama maker like you would treat a child having a temper tantrum, it's often far more effective than getting pulled into their little game. One tactic that works both for kids and for drama-loving adults is to tell them that you are not going to engage with them until they regain, uh, regain control and can deal with you in a calm, selective way. This both sets a firm boundary for how you are willing to be treated, but also shows the drama maker that they have uh, the control to change the outcome of the interaction, which in, in most cases, if not all cases, can be empowering. Another tip is try doing nothing at all. Drama people feed off your reaction to their actions. If you give them nothing, they get nothing. If they get nothing, there is no reward for being, uh, uh, for, for them acting in a dramatic and they will a way and they will find other tactics, maybe even mature ones to get what they want. I've learned a great deal about this through the adoption um, uh, uh, reading about the adoption process uh, where uh, people in the adoption uh, process trying to get certain people at certain ages showed um, that if you um, uh, come across in a more positive way uh, because it's very likely that the only attention they've known, the people that you're adopting, is a negative attention, they will try to do that to you. So sadly, you're screaming at or punishing them actually can uh, make them feel like love. When you uh, react even negatively, it teaches them that they can get love from you in that way and the behavior accelerates. It's no different there, and no different here at all. Many times people who cause drama are actually seeking any kind of attention, even negative attention. Doing nothing can be especially challenging if you are uh, an uh, empath or HSP as your default reaction to try to take away the pain, to find solutions to make things better even if it hurts you in the process. And like me, you, may, uh, you might even uh, try to reason with a drama person to find common solution that's a win-win for both parties. And trust me on this, reasoning with a drama person does not work usually. Unfortunately, drama people want the opposite things to happen and will fight to make sure they uh, cause uproar until they get the reaction they want. They will pull you into an argument. They will pull you into their world. And like a three-year-old, they definitely do not want a win-win situation. They want what they want 
when they want and how they want it. Just give no reaction at all. Go completely quiet and let them do whatever they are doing. Give nothing back. Another tip would be whatever you do, do not give in to their drama. Just as kids giving um, uh, the drama maker that what they want after they cause drama only teaches them that they can get anything they want at any time and just keep doing it. And just, just as kids, uh, you can expect more of the same. If you are feeling especially pressured to give uh, the drama maker what they are seeking, you must get away from them. Hang up the phone, walk away, excuse yourself, do uh, uh, maybe even excuse yourself to the bathroom, do whatever you need to do to remove yourself from the situation. If you are empathetic, your kind nature is going to want to give the person what they want because you can actually feel their sadness or uh, their needs. You have to stand even tougher against it. I call it tough love because you can end up feeding the beast of their need more than any other person. If you do that, you can find yourself in a difficult codependent relationship and that's even more challenging to remove yourself from. Don't know quite uh, what to say to stop the drama uh, in its tracks, well, I've got the great success with using something along these lines. You know, I can see that you are looking to get um, something from this, but I, I'm not willing to deal with it until you, my friend, calm down. Let me know when you are able to talk about this in a rational way. Until then, I'm not discussing it then stop discussing it. If the person tries to continue to drag you into the drama, get away, don't engage with them until they seem calm and seem rational. If they never uh, seem calm and rational, I think you've learned a good lesson. This isn't someone that you want in your life, nor is it someone you can count on. Go back to number one and avoid them as much as you can, as much as possible. Are you a very sensitive uh, 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 person that's very sensitive to feelings and emotions of others? Do you seem to draw needy people to you like a moth to a flame? It's very possible you are an empath. Take my uh, 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 advice and maybe uh, read about empath people. Then check out uh, uh, the results on some of them that have tests. I'm so excited to help people with this video. Uh, to so that you truly get empowered to use your sensitive and in a positive way for the world and for yourself. Call me at 844-405-HELP because together we can help each other take our lives back, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Remember, a simple smile to a total stranger can change that stranger's life forever. And believe me when I tell you this, it can change your life. 